Welcome to the Prosperity Profiles Podcast, sponsored by Prosperity Profilers, LLC. They'll help you look prosperous, feel prosperous, and be prosperous. We hope you listen often, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Now, here's your host, four-time number one best-selling author, speaker, and business coach, Holly Porter. Hello, and welcome, everybody, to another day at the podcast. All right. We do have another one of our 4040 Rules authors with us today, and that book launched November 29th, 2018. That is the volume two of it, and we have 40 more. You know, most of them are first-time authors, so I'm really excited to be having another one of them on our podcast today to interview, and her name is Kiki Simpson. How are you? Hi, Holly. I'm great. Hello, everyone. <laughs> yeah, great to have you. So um, this is this is kind of a a different uh, niche that we haven't had much of, and so I'm excited to get in and have you all listen and learn about what Kiki is going to share with us about health. So Kiki has um, she's a health and wellness guru, guru with decades of experience. Her, her journey has included work in bio, bioesthetician. Did I say that right? Biostatistician. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. An exercise physiologist and spinal health center. Director certification for American Council of Exercise, a health educator at Canyon Ranch Health Resort, and a corporate gig as a health and wellness director. So she's had lots of experience in the health industry. She has a master's degree in exercise and health education and nutrition certification through Cornell University. Kiki is the founder and chief vitality officer at Healthy Sexy Kitchen and HSK Team Building, where she continues her passion to help others be healthier and happier. We all want that, right? Right. <laughs> yes. Well, we're so happy you're joining us. And tell us a little bit more, like, what got you involved in the health industry? Well, you know, the story is I come from a family of very um, overweight, dare I say, obese people on both sides of my family. Um, and I saw that as I was growing up. And then I saw a lot of diabetes and heart disease as well. And I just made a decision in my early years to not be like the rest of my family. I know that sounds terrible, but <laughs> I just wanted to learn ways to be healthier and to not get obese myself. And so it's, that's what got me started from way back as a teenager. Well, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> to be healthy. So there's, um, you know, many bit different paths. I've heard you talk about prosperity and you know, my company is called Prosperity Profilers. Let's talk about some of those paths we can go on, you know, that's health and wealth, right? Exactly, well, health is wealth in my opinion. And um, yeah, there are many obviously ways to be prosperous, but um, finding your way, your path, your purpose, your journey, I think, is what's most important. We all have some talent, some skill, some reason to be here, and um, finding that and being excited about it and passionate about it every day is, I think, what helps to make keep us healthy as well. Oh, absolutely! I would agree with you one hundred percent. So, so who do you can you think of a story maybe of one of your clients or somebody that? you've seen maybe that's been a big change or turnaround that you really could share with us, you know, about saying their name? Oh, there, there are so many, especially when I was working in the corporate world, um, because my clients were my employees, were the employees, other employees of the company. And um, I used to meet with employees on a regular basis, one-on-one, -on -one, and do some coaching. And some of, the, some of them were amazing how you say just the right thing, just that one thing that gets them excited, gets them thinking, oh my gosh, I need to do this. 
And it is so exciting to hear when that happens. Um, I remember one in particular who, um, she was struggling with um, sugar addiction big time and gaining weight and going through menopause. And um, she and her husband were having a really hard time. And they decided together, she, she got him to come on board with her and they decided together to work on their health. And the first thing that they did was to try to wean themselves from sugar. Yeah. And um, it was amazing because it brought, not only got them healthier, their numbers when they go to the doctor were better there, you know, but, and they lost weight, but it helped their marriage as well because they had a common goal and they worked together and supported each other. And so I guess that was one of my favorite stories because, you know, it, it affects not just your physical health, but a lot of the other parts of your life as well. And yeah, you get. I would agree with you when you do it together, if you are married or have a partner and you do that together and make that journey, you know, one person may not have weight to lose per se, but they just, everybody needs to be healthy and get healthy. And anyway, absolutely more into it. And the other one's not, but my husband and I were doing, we get up and we exercise and I would sacrifice. I felt like uh, get up at 4 20 AM to walk with them. And, so we'd go for a walk because he had to work early. And so um, then he hurt his foot and he gets gout a lot, which is also a dietary thing. And so he couldn't do it. And so I ended up buying an elliptical and that's what I've been doing. What, you know, why he's been able to heal his body because he'd still come home and he does um, construction and he'd come home and still have walked 12,000 steps. And I'm like, right. like 7,000 and I had walked for an hour and I'm like, what the heck, you know? So Anyway, but I think it's good because it was like our date morning. Every morning we'd get a get up. And I, that's awesome. Yeah. Especially yeah. finding something healthy to do together, right? Yeah. Rather and than I, unhealthy. The, you know, you're, you're called Healthy Sexy Kitchen, right? Yes. I love that. And that's another thing I think that, you know, not that this is about couples or anything, but, you know, it's just the conversation that also I think when couples can get in the kitchen and cook together, you know, and they're eating healthy. I love that you call it that healthy, sexy kitchen, because to me, well, working together, that that's your name. Yeah, it is. I mean, that's part of it. But to me, it's more about just, you know, healthy is sexy. You yeah. don't, you know, if you are healthy, then you feel confident and vital and all of those things that make you sexy. And it's not really about sex per se. It's just about being a vital, um, healthy, vibrant person and confident in yourself. Yeah. And I do have a couple's date night class that I offer. Um, and that is always so much fun because uh, we do the whole thing with, we have music, we, tell, we have innuendos going on while we're cooking. We have a candlelight dinner at the end. Um, and it's, it's really a special, a special date night, I think. Kiki, do you ever go, like, would you do a retreat somewhere or travel somewhere where couples would be able to do something and have you come and do something like traveling or you just do it more local? Well, right now I'm just doing it locally, but I'm very open to traveling to, to put those kinds of things on because, you know, the more people I can reach, the better, right? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I just wondered because I thought that would be really fun for maybe even corporate people, you know, to get their spouses together and at a corporate retreat go and do something fun like that. So it would include the spouses. Yeah, for one of the fun nights instead of all the corporate meetings that are going on. Yeah, that would well, be fun. If you're listening to this podcast and that's something that interests you, we will have Kiki's information down in the show notes and you can get a hold of her and say, hey, I heard you say that. That sounds like something fun or maybe I can get my husband's company, you know, to do that because you are from the corporate world as well. And so, yeah, you can relate to that. Exactly. And that's what my, the other side of my business, HSK team building is. Okay. Um, it's for corporate team building events with cooking as the activity that, you know, you do to collaborate and uh, find each other's strengths and weaknesses. And, you know, I work with the corporations to figure out what they want their team to learn from the event. And we go from there. I love that. That's a great idea. 
I think that's, yeah, I, I love that idea. So yep, if you're listening, then you, you know that's, that's something you can do. So what's really important to you besides help and you know working with people? Like what, what's some things that are important to you? Uh, <laughs> you, my, my family is important. Um, and you know, keeping healthy in, in all different ways, uh, not just physically through nutrition and exercise, but also mentally and spiritually, emotionally. Um, being balanced, I think balance is one of um, my greatest gifts that I've been naturally given is I just seem to be a very well-balanced person. And I've been able to find um, balance in my life no matter what stage that I've been through. I've never felt that I was so stressed that, you know, I was burning out. Um, I've always been able to kind of work on that stress, um, eliminate it or reduce it. And so I think, I think, you know, balance is pretty critical to leading a healthy life in general. What do you think are some of your key secrets to staying balanced? I mean, some people, yes, it does come naturally more for, they just have more of a calming personality as well. But what would you say keeps you that way? Um, I think this is going to sound boring, but moderation, mm -hmm. moderation in all things, including moderation. Yeah. So like there are times to be extreme or adventurous or, um, you know, do something a little crazy, but you do those things in moderation. Yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think just realizing also when you are, you know, overdoing something or going overboard, because even exercise can be done to an extreme and could be detri detrimental to your health. Yeah, no, I agree. Well, it's kind of like, I, I'm going to relate it to like a child, you know, if you can get that child calm before they get escalated, you know, if you can figure out what works, I think we as adults, the same thing. If we can figure out before we get to that point that everything is going wrong and everything's out of balance, you know, recognize it early and recognize it early. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And self-care, you know, I preach self-care all the time. Um, I don't even remember the last time I had a day off. I do take self-care. I, I do that, but I mean, I can't remember like where I just haven't had a whole day off. It's been, I don't even know when months. I mean, I've just been on the go constantly. And next week it's, I'm picking a it's day. It's time. Yeah. <laughs> it's time, Holly. I got self-care in there. So I do practice what I preach, but I am kind of on that where, you know, you got, you have launches. I had an event. I traveled for five weeks and it's just like everything's screaming at you once. Well, now it's the holidays and, you know, I want to ramp things up. And so, yeah, I think that's why I was wondering what you do, because I think sometimes we just have to figure out what does work for us. Sometimes I'll take the morning a little slower and I just won't get started or I'll work for a couple hours and then I'll take a break and then I'll go shower. You know, I just try to figure out and maybe I'll just say, I just need a bath right now. Yeah, it's 10 o'clock in the morning, but I've already put in half a day's worth of work. I'm going to go have a bath, you know, it's just figuring out that. And so I, I wonder. Yeah, but I really do think that you need to take full days off at times yes. as well and get away from <laughs> your, your business and your, te and the technology because, um, and, and, you know, there are times in life though, when you can't help it life is going and it's exciting and things are happening and you're just getting all involved. And, and then you, you will hit that point where you're saying, like, I think you're saying that right now. Yeah. Um, it's time for me to take a day away. And so one of the tricks to that, of course, is not to say yes to everything. Right. right? I'm better at that. But I think, you know, a lot of it, turn your phone off. You know, it's like people know I usually respond to them. Like, if not immediately, right away, because, you know, that in the real estate world, that's how it had to be. It's like, you want to not miss those, those uh, right. you know, connections that are coming through. And so I do respond quickly to people, if at all possible, because I don't know, I'm an action taker. And that's, I think that's important. But yeah, I think just shutting the phone off and just having some downtime and that's, it, yeah, it's time. But And getting out in nature, Holly. Yeah right now so we can't yes, do that i know i know but get out in nature whenever you can that's another thing um nature actually they have found through looking at um brain scans 
of people that nature helps our brains have better connections. The, the brain cells have better connections and things um, calm down in the brain. Those excitable areas calm down just by being out in nature. Totally agree with that. Yeah, I love, I love that. And that was what was hard, I think, for me about taking the morning walk. It would smell good and it was nice because I, I live by canyon trails and it's really by water and everything. And so it was nice, but it was also dark, you know, and so we didn't want to yeah. go trail. We would just circle around the park a few times and that was harder because it wasn't as, as out in nature. But I agree with you. Yeah, I get out and and just, or go just sit in a park, you know? I mean, it's healing just to watch kids play for me, you know? Yes. Yeah. Sit in your car if you don't want to hear the screaming, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I think it's just figuring out really what works for you. And I've noticed different things at different times of my life work differently, you know, at just those different stages when I'm raising my kids. You know, I had a daycare, a preschool, a kid's clothing store, and then I moved up to a salon. You know, so I had all these businesses that, that wow. were my life at the time, you know, and then it didn't. And so I would go do something different. So you so, moved on. Yeah. Yeah. And I think just that's the whole recognizing uh, the balance, you know, because if to me, my motto is if it's not fun, I'm not doing it, you know? And so I think I love that you said that, that you, that you live more in that calm, peaceful life. And yeah, that's just awesome. Um, any other stories you can think of? I love stories. So I love when people <laughs> share stories. Anything else you can think of that is on your heart? Um, you're putting me on the spot. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, you know, I think, I, I think the, the biggest story that's just hitting my brain right now is, is my own in that I have been able to, you know, not only am I over 40, but I'm over 50 and I'm um, a lot healthier than my family. They're, you know, I have brothers, sisters, cousins that are similar ages and they're all suffering from mm -hmm. um, different chronic diseases, high blood pressure, diabetes, arthritis, um, different digestive and colon issues and uh, which also run in my family. Uh, there's also a lot of cancer on my mom's side of the family. And um, so far, I mean, you know, anything can happen to any of us at any time. Uh, but I have been able to stay healthy just by, you know, being sensible about nutrition, eating real food, not a lot of packaged, processed, mm -hmm. you know, junk food, just simple, real food. And, um, uh, you know, I'm mostly vegetarian, but, that, but I'm not strictly anything. I'm very flexible about different things. It's just as long as I have this 80-20 rule, you know, that 80% of what I do is healthy. <laughs> and if I, can, if I can keep it to around 80%, I'm doing a, a better job than most. And That's the balance. So can you? You can do the same thing, you know, 80%. So you have that piece of cake on your birthday or you whatever it may be, whatever your temptations are, um, you can't be perfect all the time. Yeah. And that, that's a stressor too, to try to be. And that's something I try to let people know in my work is that I'm a home cook just like you. I'm not a, a formally trained chef. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to do the best I can with family obligations as well as business, as well as, uh, you know, my self-care and um we're just all trying to do the best we can so taking it one step at a time just try to do one thing to work towards whatever your goals are and then move on from there yeah i love that do one thing do figure one that thing. out and do one more thing you know exactly exactly take that first step though because yeah. you'll never get there if you don't take the first step Yes, I love that. Oh, that's really good. Do you by chance remember the mantra that you put in the book? Well, there was a favorite quote or mantra. Yes, mine was a quote from um, Dr. Seuss, uh, Theodore Giesel, yeah. which was, be who you are and say what you feel because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. 
I love that one. And that's kind of my mantra because I am sort of a unique personality to a lot of uh, my friends. <laughs> and, um, you know, there are certain people that aren't going to like that, aren't going to like who you are. And that's true of anyone. You can't please everyone. And so yeah. just do the right thing, be the best you can be, and whatever happens, happens. Yeah, I'm at the point, you can't please everyone, get over it. <laughs> yeah, get over it. It's hard it's though, it's hard as a woman, I think we wanna be, we're pleasers and nurturers. Yeah. 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 So. Yes, I know, and I always think, if you don't like me, why don't you like me, you know? And so, <laughs> like me, I'm just at that point, I'm, you know, you get older and you get wiser and you just like, Life's way too short to live in that thought process. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. Sometimes it's, it, most of the time it's not about you. It's about them. So true. Yeah. And they're, they're, they're dealing with things or whatever it may be that you're just not resonating with them right now. And that's okay. Yeah. Well, and I've learned when they're in that place, there's probably nothing you could say that would change it. So, no you know, it's not worth, it's not worth the effort sometimes to. Oh, you can be as kind. Yes, kind, kind, kind. Yeah, kindness and love <laughs> are, my, are my heart virtues. So, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Good. Well, I'm so glad that we got to know you a little better. And, you know, everyone listening will have Kiki's information and, you know, contact information here in the show notes. And you'll be able to get her chapter in the book. Um, I can't even tell you what number it is right now off the top of my head. She doesn't know yet either. So, <laughs> but it's called keeping your head above the voices. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. That's your chapter. Keeping your head above the voices. So look which back. means, yeah, the people who are naysayers in your life are talking you out of things that you are excited about or want to do or passionate about or, or that you feel is your purpose. Don't, don't let people talk you out of doing what you feel is the right thing to do you know, move on and, and push forward because you can do it. If there's something that you're really passionate about, you can do it. Everything Find is incredible, right? Exactly. Yeah. I love that. What a, what a great, what a great name to, there's so many great titles. Um, and it's a question and answer book. So I know it was kind of strange to have titles, but I love the titles that everybody came up with for the chapters. So you will too, as the readers. Um, so make sure you go grab your copy and I guess we will see you next time. And Kiki, we will, we will talk to you again soon as well. Okay. Make sure you eat your vegetables, have a positive <laughs> outlook and be kind to others. <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, thank you listeners and we will see you next time on another day on the podcast. Bye for now. All right. Thanks. Bye. Thank you for listening to Prosperity Profiles podcast sponsored by Prosperity Profilers, LLC, helping you look prosperous, feel prosperous and be prosperous. We hope you enjoyed our time together and we'll visit again soon. You can learn more about Prosperity Profilers by going to hollyporter.com.